John, welcome. Hi, Anne. Hi. Nice so, to see you, Lisa. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. You're um, so you are uh, you're an acting agent, an actor, a yes. singer. Yes. And you are agent to a wealth of talent at IAL Agency. I am indeed. IAL Agency. <laughs> you <did good. laughs> yeah. um, and you established that with Rachel Cullen about seven years ago now. That's right. And that comprises of Irish Actors London yes. and International Actors London. Yes. There we go. Okay. So we've merged. Merged. Yes, so we're pretty yeah. much International Actors London like on the whole now. Yeah. Why did you start the agency? You're about seven years old. Why did you start it and what's your experience been so far? Well, first of all, I didn't start it. Rachel started Rachel it. Rachel did, yeah. <laughs> you joined pretty much straight away, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I was yeah. in it very early. Actually, there was three of us at the early stages. Um, but the reason I started um, and we started the agency was because, you know, we were both immigrant actors. Um, we both felt uh, um, quite disconnected from our careers and quite disconnected from a lot of what we had invested a lot of our time and our dedication and our money and our training yeah. into and then to have to come to another country and hand, all, hand over the responsibility for all of that to somebody else yeah. who didn't necessarily always see you the way you saw yourself or you know the way an audience might see you yeah. um, and very often we would get boxed in as Irish people uh, and so, but most of all, we felt disconnected oh, from our careers. And so we wanted to see if we could um, access more of the information for ourselves, yeah. firstly, me and Rachel as actors, and then is that something we could pass on to other actors mm -hmm. as an agency? Uh, yeah. What well, became the next question? And the answer, of course, to that is yes, yes. in a big way. Yeah, massive. You are... Um, I think very much a modern agency, aren't you? Yes. And you've, you know, evolved, and you're very, very successful. So, just t can you talk me a little bit about the journey that you've gone through to now? Because you're incredibly successful. You have loads of actors on your books. You do really well. Your relationships with cast and directors are phenomenal as well. Thank you. So, uh, yes. you know, that's obviously key to, you know, yes. success. Yes. So, how have you gone from? from there to there. Okay, A lot great. of hard work, presumably. Yes, a lot of time. And, and, you know, for the first few years, we didn't get paid, really, at all. We got paid, you know, two or three years down the line. We got our first dividend, Rachel and I, and, you know, we went for dinner and celebrated. It was a triumph. And every little um, job that books through our office today is still a triumph. Yeah. And it's still a joy to give actors that information, you know. Um, well, our first, our first objective as agents, Rachel and I, uh, or our first kind of statement to each other was, we need to send great actors who deliver great auditions to casting directors every time. Yeah. If we don't send great actors every time, we might as well stop right now because we're not going to get anywhere. And so uh, our priority became taking on brilliant actors. Now remember we started as Irish Actors London. Yes. And so it was running solely as Irish Actors London for about two years um, because we thought, okay, but it, it, it was about us, it was about me and Rachel as Irish actors, as immigrants, and we thought, okay, well let's see if we can you know, offer that out to other Irish people and maybe we'll create yeah. a little niche for ourselves. But of course we expanded and we would go to showreels and we would see great people from other countries. Uh, you know, there'd be a great Chinese woman at a showcase and be like, well, we're Irish, so <laughs> she, do, she doesn't fit our kind of market uh, place. Um, and so for two years we wondered how we might expand and then eventually uh, we thought, well, why don't we focus on immigrants, people who also share our experience of going to another country um, with a dream, trying to make it and, uh, and see if we can... Um, offer immigrant artists something that we, we can garner for ourselves. And uh, it's obviously proved very successful and, and that's, it sounds like a very natural and organic path for you then. Yes, and it's also something that we love. We love enabling actors and I always say it at my actor, me, actor meetings that our agency is about enablement yeah. and empowerment. And I think that's what any agency should be about. It's also about access to information all of the information that pertains to your career that you've put so much into. Yeah. You should be able to see that at any time. It's great if you trust me yeah. as your agent, 
but you know there are many people on any agency's books I can't expect 120 people to go yeah yeah you know John is great I trust him you know well let me see the the information that shows you that, that I'm trustworthy and that's basically your submissions list because that's yeah. the key to any actor's chances in the business in London. I think people are afraid to ask for that from their they agents. Are. They are. And they shouldn't be, should they? They should not be afraid no. to ask the agent for the submissions list. Some agents will say no. Some agents will say, don't you trust me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, and some agents, like us, will say, yes, <laughs> I'll get that to you by lunchtime. Yeah and copy paste the list, send it by reply, and that takes about 20 seconds. And that's your job. But as actors, we know that that will alleviate scenarios that actors, and, and kind of what I call the actor pain, yeah. you know, scenarios that actors go through where they feel disconnected, mm -hmm. or that they're not, you know, why am I not up for Game of Thrones? Well, look at your list, you probably are up for Game of Thrones. Because if you fit it, if you fit the role, You'll be up for it. You will be up for it. And it's your du the duty of your agent to submit you, in my opinion, for every role that you fit. Yeah. If you're Spanish or Italian or African, it's, all, it's even more important, if it can be so, that you're submitted for everything that you fit because there's less of it yeah. out there. And we represent a lot of actors who are not out auditioning every day like standard British actors. We don't have a lot of standard British actors. Of course, we have some. We need some because we want to fill those British roles yeah. as well. Um, but we try to focus on Brits at our agency who have other qualities, other languages, certain specific skills, connections to other countries. We basically have an open book to take on whoever we want, whoever we like. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have to like them. That's really important, isn't it? I think it? so. Yeah. You know, if you don't like somebody, and we don't go around not liking people, yeah. you know, by, you know, we're not going to help. We don't, we're not going to be inclined to help, and we do want to help. Your, um, your relationships with your actors is so important, isn't it? Very important. Yeah. It's important that actors feel that they can have all their questions answered, especially younger actors, mm -hmm. and especially immigrant actors, who maybe English isn't the first language. You know, it's important that you respect their impetus, uh, their desire to be creative, and their artistry. It's a courageous thing to be an actor, you know. Oh, gosh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Of course, you are an actor, yeah. as I am. Yeah. Um, but, it does, but, you know, I, I meet actors every day. Um, I, I usually have a meeting with a new actor three times a week. Wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because no. you, you probably already know when you see the showreel, yeah. you get the feel of who they are. That's right. Sort of, yeah. yeah. So uh, showreel is so important. Showreel is so important. Showreel is everything. Yeah. It's far more important than the showcase. Yep. Don't be freaking out. Actors, can I tell you, as an agent, don't be freaking out so much yeah. about your showcase. If you are, you know, if you're one of those people who thinks it all depends on this one day and this one performance, it doesn't. Make your show real brilliant. Because that's what people are seeing all the time, over and over again. That's really going to catch the attention, isn't it? Well, that's number one, that's what's going to get you an agent. Yeah. Because an agent is going to watch your show reel from start to finish. Yeah. All three minutes of it. Yeah. Which actually, casting directors probably won't, do they? They'll watch seconds of it. Well, here's the thing so... the function of your show reel is to get the casting director off that page as quickly as possible with a yes. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Doesn't that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. So the, and, and, and if, if you think about it this way, a casting director has, we guess, but because I don't know a lot of casting directors that well, um, we guess that they have thousands upon thousands of submissions for every role. And so they're up and down the screen, the actors are up and down the screen. So you, you want to get them off your page as quickly as possible with a yes. So keep your best scene first. Make your show real as if it's a movie, production. Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of quality. In terms of production quality and production values. Don't sit just like two of us. 
here today, even though this is perfect for what we're doing, on a couch with a camera on each of you and have a big long scene with loads of dialogue. That's not how films work. That's not how TV works. It's a line here, a line there. It's a lot about your reaction when somebody else is speaking. It can literally be a couple of sentences, a sentence shot somewhere differently. You can go and shoot tiny little scenes and yeah. make something special. Yeah, it's very rarely in your professional life, unless you're you know, an A-list like lead role in a movie, you know, that you're gonna be doing four or five lines, more than four or five lines at a time or in, or in a take or in a scene, you know? So and yes, keep the production values high uh, camera movement and stuff, editing, sound quality, all of those things are very important. You're not there in your showreel to prove to us that you can act. Mm -hmm. We'll know <laughs> if you can't. You can see it straight away. Because we seconds. can see it within milliseconds. Yeah. So yeah, get our attention as agents. In other words, get their attention as casting directors, because this is a chain, isn't it? Yeah. Actor, agent, casting director, director, producer, distributor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you want to, you know, make an impact. So that, you know, make an impact with your scenes, write scenes that suit you yeah. if you're making your own reel. This is it, and we all have, even the, the latest iPhones are perfect for filming. Yes. They do HD. Yes. They're brilliant. You just get a little tripod, stand it on so it's stable. Absolutely. And of course, headshots are very important as well. Headshots, headshots, and I know we're on basics here for all of you actors, but there are newcomers everywhere. There are so many young actors and immigrant actors, you know, being, being um, released, as it were, into the industry every year from all of the schools in London, mm -hmm. and all of the schools in the UK, and all of the drama schools around the world. So it's, it's a, what you have now for actors is a gallery of photographs. I'm a photographer as well, by the way. Ah. Yes, trained oh, photographer wow. for two I years. Know that. So I understand the power yeah. of and they're very, an image. They're very different to any other. You must, must get a, a proper um, photographer who knows actors' headshots because they're distinctive. They're not, you, you know, your friend might be an amazing photographer, but they need to understand um, the brief. Ex the, exactly. The headshot the composition, brief. the look, the the you function know, and that it should be very much you not glamorous that's so important well i think i think there can be a glamorous shot mm. and i think the commercials perhaps yes yeah. i think for women maybe more than men because women tend to you know drag up a bit more don't they <laughs> so you know <laughs> men do too but you know so but when you can have five shots on your page or more so if one is quite glam one is quite not one, uh, one is maybe the natural, everyday you. Uh, I suggest to the men that they wear a suit and tie in one of their shots so that you can um, evoke the businessman. Yeah. And a lot of the male roles that go out on Spotlight wear suits. Yeah. And now here's the thing, uh, and, uh, and another shot should be the smiling shot. I call it the smiling shot with teeth. And uh, you know, that's, that's what we'll use for commercials. Yeah. And for <clears throat> comedies, nice guy, nice gal, yeah. roles, the agent can choose the shot from your gallery, depending on the brief. Exactly. And that becomes the main shot on your page for that particular brief. Yeah. Which is brilliant. Which is great. Yeah. So an agent can get you a little bit closer to the door by selecting the right headshot, yeah. provided that you've given your, uh, your agent and a good selection of powerful, you know, shots in different casting briefs. Um, yeah, so yeah, to sum, to sum up maybe, headshots, four or five headshots in different casting moods. Yeah. Your, your agent can choose from that to get you closer to the door. Mm -hmm. here's, here's a myth I want to debunk. Agents do not get you auditions. This applies mostly to young, younger actors. Casting directors get you auditions. Yeah. They're the ones who are Casting directors in. make the decisions about who to call in for an audition. An agent's job is to make sure that you're in the mix. Simple as that. 
when it comes to the really important stuff that we all love, the Games of Thrones, it's not my scene, but people love it. Yeah. The films, the TV, the real acting roles that we do it for, great acting roles in drama, comedies, and so on. Mm. The casting directors for those submissions are usually going to write in big, bold print on the breakdown, no calls, please. No emails, please. So it doesn't matter if you've got Idris Arba's agent or me submitting you. Yeah. The job of your agent is that you're submitted. And the evidence that that job is being done is on your submissions list. Good. Simple, isn't it? Really simple, yeah. yeah. So, you know, my agent's not getting me anything because you're going to hear that sometimes. I've felt that myself, and it's been true sometimes. And I know that the agent-actor dynamic, very, very important. But, you know, I do hear a lot of, my, my, you know, not from us, but from actors coming into us and um, changing agents sometimes. And, you know, it's a valid uh, concern. Is my agent doing their job? Um, again, that's evidenced on the list. Um, just in terms of casting directors and your, obviously your kind of, it's important that you have a relationship or a connection with casting directors. Yes. So um, how has that kind of developed over the years? Because you are talking to them on the phone. I mean, obviously yes. not for every role. But, um, Correct. So how has that kind of grown over the years? When we started our agency, um, people like Lucinda Sison or um, Nina Gold, um, Let's see, G Gina J, people like that. The big people, top, You know, top. the top, top yeah. Premier League people. Dan Hubbard too, but I know Dan, yeah. so he's, um, you know, we, we thought, okay, well, these are the people that we need to get our actors in front of. Yeah. And so when their breakdowns, but this applies to all, you know, we, we try to submit accurately. Mm -hmm. That's very important yes. for agencies too, because a fraction of all casting directors' submissions will be incorrect from agents. And that's not going to help. Two, three years later, you know, we're, we've booked, you know, first of all, small jobs uh, at one office, another job in another office. Oh, so-and-so's got a Game of Thrones job. And it snowballs, presumably, then. Yeah, and it rolls yeah. along. Suddenly, oh, you, we're back at, you know, we're back at your office again. So now we've, we're three jobs down the line. Yeah. You know, we've talked about three jobs together, or we had a young guy on a big Disney show, so uh, we were talking with Brina at Disney daily. Yeah. In the old days, it was about real life yeah. networking, being out at night, partying, mm. going to premieres, going to openings. Making friends. Making friends. Who are you? Yeah. What's that connection? How can I get to know that person? Now it's all about digital relationships, and that's very important to us, actually. It's important to us that we deliver actors who deliver great auditions to Lucinda Sison and Nina Gold and Dan Hubbard. Your actors are representing you, essentially, yes. aren't they? So yes. It's really important. And actors are our clients, not casting directors. You know? So it, it means that actors will come to us, talented actors, who we need of every diverse shape and form you know, we want them to come to us and say, hey, I've heard good things about your agency. Also, when an actor is going out and doing an audition, they're opening the door for another actor. I know most actors aren't concerned about that. But when you're representing your agency like that and you do a great audition, you know, the door is slightly more open to the, the mm. person from that agency who does the next audition. I've never thought about that, actually. Yeah, that's totally true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. And how many actors do you have on your books? Do you keep it strict to a certain amount? No. We have currently about 120 actors. About, uh, well, I suppose about 30, 40% of that might be unavailable at any given time. They're working, hopefully, is the first reason. Um, or they're in other countries, or they're doing something in their personal life, or they're on holiday, which brings us to availability, actually. Oh. That's, that's, that's a uh, one. It's a good one for the newcomers, isn't it? Yes. 
Uh, it's, a very, it's, it's a very tricky thing to manage as an actor, isn't it? To have the right work on the side, to bring you money in, but also give you the freedom to go and audition and get the job. Because sometimes you are up until the night before, before you get the confirmation to go and do the job the next day. And it is very, very tricky. And having availability just for the audition, never mind the job. Yes. And I would imagine you come up sticky a few It does times. get sticky sometimes. It does get sticky. Mm. The availability list is the agent's kind of number one tool when they're making submissions, which is on Spotlight, by the way, mostly. I mean, there are other, there are other reputable casting sites out there, but Spotlight really is where everything of any significance is going to be posted by casting directors. Actors only see about 10% of what's posted on Spotlight because actors don't see what most agents will see. Because Nina Gold, I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong, Nina Gold, but, you know, she's not going to put out her Game of Thrones big roles for every actor to see out there uh, because she'll get inundated. So let's say there's a big lead character going out in Game of Thrones. Well, Nina or Robert will add to the breakdown if they want to, seeking profile names only. Right, so it's very clear. So that's very clear. Yeah. You know, if you are not a profile name, if your client is not a profile name, please don't submit him for this role because that's not what this role is about. There might be another role underneath it where it doesn't say um, seeking profile names only yeah. or uh, they, they do term it in different ways. They say TV names only, well-recognized names only. Um, but they, the next role might, be, might not be so, so you can be submitted for that one. So obviously you're, the talent that you have is very, very unique. Yes. Um, do you find that that makes you, stand, you, you and your talent stand out more? Yes, in a sense. Yeah. Uh, but it does mean that maybe, and we spoke about the size of agencies earlier, um, it does mean that maybe we need to be a larger agency. Yeah. So even though, yes, people come to us looking for something different, different sometimes, um, we don't, we're not always able to submit uh, as much yeah. because we are not going to have four British men between the ages of 20 and 30 mm -hmm. and four British women between the ages of 30 and 40 and whatever, you know. So we do need those people too. So in a way we need to be bigger, but our focus is on the international yeah. immigrant thing. But you know, um, it, it was a different thing, you know, talking about the size of agencies. It was kind of different before if you had a big agency, because there was a lot of physical space associated with that, offices and stuff, but it's all centralized now to your phone. Yes. And to your laptop. So whether you have... You can work anywhere. Yes, and whether you have 200 clients or 400 clients, you know, kind of in a way doesn't really matter. Mm. As long as you're not doing too much replicating. Yeah. And everyone's getting a good shot at what they're suited for, to, you're fine. But we do need to grow to a larger agency because we're international. You work very, very hard, acting agents do, and I think a lot harder than actors realise. You're working 24-7. Can you just talk through the process a little bit, just to really hammer home the extent of the work that you do? Mm -hmm. And so we run like any office. From 10 in the morning, we start answering telephone calls. Um, at 6 o'clock in the evening, we kind of officially stop. We're not duty-bound. Really. We need a life. We need a life. We need so. to play badminton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, from 10 to 6, we run like a normal office. We're answering emails from actors. We're answering email queries from casting directors. Um, your audition will come in via email yeah. often um, or by phone about 50%. Phones aren't hopping at agents' offices like they used to be no. in the old days because everything is done in different ways yeah. and everything is, you know, it's all digitized. So when a phone call goes, there's plenty of time to talk. Your agent should have time to speak to you on the phone if you call, you know. Keep your call maybe between 11 and 5 
because the first hour might be a little bit busy and the last hour is a little bit, you know, we're tying things up. Um, but, you know, we're there to reply to you by text, by email, by phone call from 10 to 6. Uh, submissions are going all day. Some casting directors are putting out submissions at midnight. Yep. Sometimes for the next day. Yes. It can be that urgent. Sometimes a casting director will put out a submission at 11 p.m. I'm at home, I'm working, I'm making submissions at 11 p.m. shortly after she's put it out. Sometimes it'll happen that she'll send the email to call the actor in before 12, within the hour. She, I say, because many of them are women. Um, I think most casting directors are women, do you think? I think a larger percentage are. I think a larger yeah. percentage might be. Mm -hmm. And the, the audition is booked before I go to bed for the actor, because the email will come in, I'll send it to the actor, yeah. the actor will confirm, I'll confirm with the casting director. That's before anyone else gets to their offices in the morning. So it is a bit 24 hour, like most things now though. Yeah, and weekends too, Yeah, I see, yeah. yeah. And the early bird catches the worm, you know. Yes. Um, so the casting director's list is, is something that's growing all the time. When a submission gets put on spotlight, the list of actors being submitted is a monster that's growing all the time. She the casting director can dip into that at any time and make a decision about watching showreels or making meetings. So you want to be in early. And you want your agent to be submitting, you know, when sharp, sharp sharpish. Yeah. Yeah. So submissions are very important. Yeah. yeah. And the timing of them, yeah. This leads really nicely, actually, into my next question, which is um, when it comes to the role of the agent and your relationship and responsibilities, um, you know, I think this is quite a grey area for actors. You know, what, what level of relationship should they have? How much can they contact them? Who's responsible for, for what? Can they still go and contact casting directors? So I just wanted to, I think maybe it varies depending on the agent and the individual. So just wanted to get your, your thoughts on this as well. Well, because I'm an actor myself, I understand how actors are feeling or have a, a you know, sense of identification mm. with the feeling of disconnection that can sometimes happen, um, but also wanting to have very simple questions answered. And it's not very difficult. So uh, we always believe in handing over information and giving, it, giving actors everything they need. Um, it's fine to call your agent between 10 and 6 or to text, uh, respect office hours you know, and weekend hours, but we're reasonable. So if it's urgent, obviously we need to talk. I think what's most important though is that there's a feeling of equality between the actor and the agent and that the power dynamic, if you like, has balance, Yeah. you know, and that we understand, yes, we have an arrangement. If I help you to achieve this, then I'll get rewarded, you know, mm financially and that's what it's about yeah. power dynamics in the industry I mean that's a whole it's massive yeah that's a big a big current mm. issue um, so we try to work against that because actors really are at the bottom of the barrel in this industry in a sense we're very disposable yeah. you know people get penciled and most good casting directors will let you know when a pencil is released but very often so, you know, sometimes the dates that an actor is penciled for will come and go, and nobody cares. Yeah. And the actor should be informed, in my opinion. So you should always be able to, you know, you know, if there is something like that outstanding, do ask your agent because they should follow up on it. We always do. How much do you help shape an actor's career? career? How much do you advise them on maybe the types of roles that are suitable for them, what perhaps isn't right? Um, you know, if, if they're doing comedy, let's, let's focus on that. How much are you kind of going Well, here's the thing, though. You kind of have to be different things to different people. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't realise that until I became an agent, of course. But, you know, some, um, an older person, might need something very different to a young person from Italy. Yeah. You know, one person might need a little bit more mentoring. Another p person might need very little, except the dates. Yeah. They've done it before and they, they know what they're they doing. They know exactly what yeah. they're doing, you know. Um, so you have to be uh, different things. So we try to be what we can. 
I try to gauge personally, yeah. you know, when I take on a, a, a client, an actor, you know, what does this person need? What are my responsibilities yeah. to this person? What do I need to know? What do I need to find out about this person's talent and what they have to offer the industry? How can I leverage that yeah. and give them the best shot that they can have? That's quite a responsibility. Yeah. It should be taken seriously, in my opinion, because people have put a lot into it, you know? So that becomes a duty. Make sure that this person is submitted for everything that they fit. Yeah. If their headshots are kind of scraggy or not good or whatever, you know, try to be, try to be a little bit direct and honest without being bossy. Yeah. Because <laughs> some people hate you telling them that stuff. But that's so important. That yeah. is your job to say, just maybe get a couple more. Yeah. Yeah, it might be time for new headshots. Yeah. Oh, you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. You know who you are. <laughs> Your headshots are five years old. It's true though, isn't it? It's so true. Yeah. And it's so cheap to change headshots. Yeah. I change mine, you know. And you can change one. Change one. It must be fresh. Keep them fresh. fresh. You know, sometimes uh, Rachel and I think, you know, sometimes when you have a new headshot, a fresh look, you sometimes look like a fresh new person and that can sometimes be useful as an actor. Um, you know, international actors who don't speak English as a first language need to maximize their skills yeah. and the tools that are going to help them to get roles that aren't language necessarily based. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. stuff like horse riding, driving a car, singing, fighting, you know, whatever is going to get you more castings, yeah. that's really important and especially important as an immigrant international actor, but for all actors. How do you feel about actors going out and, and approaching casting directors and sending letters, sending their showreels and really getting involved in it themselves? Because I've had mixed responses, you know, some yourselves, you know, yes, go out there, others, no, we're responsible, we do everything. And it seems to vary depending on the agent. Do you mean how do we feel about actors yeah. being out there being proactive? Yes. Oh, I, I mean, you know, I'm an actor first. Mm. You have to be proactive. Yeah. You have That's to do right. what you can. Yeah. You know, you're going to make a few mistakes. You might get an email that says, look, I've been inundated with emails, can you just... Use your common sense. If you've done something interesting, there's no harm in writing to reason. people. Have a reason. Yeah. You know? To write. Yeah. Ask your agent first if you're unsure. Just check. If you do have an agent, um, ask them if you're unsure. Yeah, good. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the industry. So. I think it's seen a massive evolution um, over, you know, even the last five years. Yes. The, the roles are changing, the yes. type of work. So what changes have you seen so far in the types of work, the volume of work, perhaps the usage fees? Um, what, have, what have you seen changing from your point of view? Diversity, diversity, diversity. Thanks be to God because it is so overdue. Well, I'm talking decades overdue. This industry is very much having a moment, isn't it? Of self-examination. And there's been a lot of stuff that's been nasty yeah. and um, oppressive, exploitative. Um, that's a big change. I would say, you know, I think it was 2014 and 2015, something like that, that all of the nominations for acting roles at the Oscars were white, yeah. and I might add straight, um, people. And that was, I mean, that was the um, Oscar so white mm. moment, wasn't it? Now that's changed a bit. Amazing and it's that we've still come changing. this far to this day and age, and it's yeah. Yes, it's amazing that that's still an issue. Um, but it, you know, the acting and entertainment industry will reflect society at large, 
and society at large is a straight white male dominated world still. So the industry is going to reflect that. Yeah. Um, it's changing because the world is changing um, and it needs to change. Francis McDormand had an epic moment at this year's Oscars. And I speak about the Oscars not because they're necessary. I mean, I'm not a great awards, fan of awards, business, all, any of that stuff, you know. But it reflects, it's in, it's, it reflects our industry and it's, um, it reflects privilege. Our showcases, actors showcases that I go to see, will reflect that in that, and I mean this respectfully to everybody, most of the actors on stage will be white. And there will be a minority, small minority, who will be other than that. And I think a lot of people are taking responsibility for that now. And I think a lot of great changes are happening in casting now yeah. that encompass that. But it's so overdue. So I see that. I see, um, I see a change in how women are being perceived in the casting world. Yeah. I see a change in how queer people are being portrayed and received yeah. in the casting world. And that's all very good. I would say it's still not enough. But it's good. This is the thing, the casting breakdowns come through and it might say boy next door, girl next door. So they don't want a model, but you still find sometimes they are casting that model person. Correct. Also, it might say, you know, in, on a casting breakdown, there's a, there's a little section which says appearance. And then it could say white, black, a combination of, uh, or it could say white, black, Asian, or it could say any meaning anybody yeah. of that age and gender um, can be submitted for that role. So if it says any, sometimes there'll be references, pictures, yeah. reference pictures attached also, sometimes more than one. And sometimes all the, white, all the reference pictures are white people. Yeah. And that is a little frustrating for me, but I still submit. If it says any, any. I will submit any race. It's a good time to be a young actor, I think. It's an exciting time to be a young actor, or an, indeed an actor of any age, but yeah. change is uh, afoot. Yeah. Do you, what are your thoughts on low paid work? I know some people are very much against it, um, but I, if you're, I guess it depends what you're getting from it. Yes, I agree. I agree. I think sometimes we have to do low and no paid work. I mean, where else are we going to get experience? But, you know, keep it within reason. I mean, I, you know, I've done a lot of fringe theater myself, yeah. which didn't always pay. I don't do it now as an older actor, but when I was in my 20s, I did. My early 20s, when I came here to London first, you know, there's a great role going on in this French theatre. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see if I can get an audition for that. OK, it's not paid, but someone might see it. But also, I'll get to play a great role, and I need to. So yeah, within reason, use your common sense. Have you had any instances where you've um, just going to kind of times up women having trouble, uh, maybe going to castings where they've been asked to do something that's not nice? Maybe they go on set and something's been asked of them that's um, not been agreed with you beforehand. Have you, you know, I, I've had experiences where I've been uncomfortable on a job doing things or, you know, I'm doing something and I'm not getting paid right for it or uh, I've been put up for something years back that it is not right and I know a lot of actors have been through difficult situations have you have you come across this or do you think it just is not happening as much now and obviously time's up is is oh, hel helping too. this and me too yeah I have to say as an agent I haven't encountered it from my clients in terms of reporting back inappropriate scenarios that they've encountered in their audition lives yep. that's not to say it doesn't happen I'm sure it does, especially to women, I think. But um, 
Uh, there's been, you know, it, it's in the breakdowns as well. Sometimes, you know, I mean, there was a there was a, a movie made a couple of years ago called Nymphomaniac. Yeah. And it was a requirement, as far as I remember, that anybody who was to be submitted for the role would be prepared to audition nude. Yeah. Do you do you remember? Uh, I, yes. Okay. I remember. I remember the, the film. Okay. Um, yes. I and, seen and the film. And I haven't seen it, but and talk of the auditions yet. Okay. Right. So that's in the cast. That's in the. You know, that's not in an audition scenario. You know, that's like on paper, as it were. You can't audition for this unless you're prepared to audition naked. So what do we do as agents then, and how do we feel? Yeah. Big, I mean, I know how I feel. Big director. Big director. Does that make it right? I Does it? I don't think so. I don't think so either. What did I do as an agent? OK, I put an email, I sent an email to all of the women with the breakdown. And, and I asked, please, let's, you know, here's the breakdown for this movie by a well-established, important director. Um, would you like to be submitted? And so it really is the actor's choice then, isn't it? And then it's the actor's choice. Yeah. And so there was uh, uh, two or three who were submitted, who came back to say yes. Um, they were submitted, one was asked to audition, and she bottled out. Did she? Yeah, yeah. Um, awful, I think that's, Abominable. Some people would argue that it's, you know, it is who we are. Um, it, being nude is, is part of life. It is. And it's a beautiful thing. It is. Um, I guess it's the way in which it's done, and I guess in the way in which it's filmed, and if it's how it's managed, I guess, by the producers. It's the abuse of power, mm. first and foremost. Secondly, only one person will play this role. How many people are you going to audition for it? They don't need to see you naked at the audition, do they? No. You don't need to see anybody naked at the audition, number one. But also, bear in mind that 99.9 .9 of the people who audition for you naked will not get this role. So that's, let me put it another way. None of them are going to get it, except for one. So you're going to have all of these people audition for you in the nude, and they're all going to go home and start processing their feelings about it. Yeah. Now, I know actors, and actors will say, I didn't get the role. Was it something to do with me? And Sometimes? Body. Yeah. Was it, you know, was it me? Did I make a mistake? Mm. Did I do something? Is it because I'm, you know, seven pounds overweight? Yeah. And here's another thing, our, our industry is, you know, sick sickly obsessed with physical beauty, yeah. physical perfection, for women especially, but also for men. I've had an actor go off for six weeks, be paid a bucket load of money to bulk up for a big Hollywood blockbuster movie. So he went off and he bulked up, and he got paid a whole lot of money to bulk up and change his body shape, because his body shape wasn't what they wanted. A lot of actors like that, though, don't they? They do, they do, but yeah. he didn't get the role at that point. Oh. Because he didn't bulk up enough. Ah, interesting. Isn't it? Mm. You so think go, that you all your body's wrong. Yeah. That's, that's difficult, isn't it? Because you have a specific role to fill. It requires someone, maybe it's someone in 300, a, 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 a warrior, guy. gladiator, was it? It was that director, it, yeah. Yeah, and then they're not... That's tough, isn't it? It is tough. Mm. It is tough. You think you're kind of yeah. booked at that point. Yeah, very tough. I think, you know, we've, we've also had, you know, we've also had actors who turned down auditions for gay roles. Really? Yes. That happens too. That surprises me. Hmm? That surprises me. Certainly it surprised me too. Yeah. It surprised me too when it does. That's a tough one to deal with as well, you know. So it's, it's part of what we do. We have it on our form, actually, our Welcome to IAL form. Nice. Yeah. 
<laughs> willing to audition in the swimmer? Yes, no? Yeah. Um, willing to appear nude? Yes, no? But kind of we'd always put it out to the actors anyway. By the way, that's another thing. Sometimes if I'm unsure about a submission or whether an actor wants to do or is interested in something, I'll send the breakdown to the actors in a group email and ask you if you want to be submitted. Yeah. So I'll say, you know, please reply if you'd like to be submitted for this one, stating which role. Yeah. Good. Um, just want to move on to, on, I'm calling onboarding actors. So do you like that? On, onboarding. Onboarding actors, so, what's that? Um, your kind of process, how you take on actors on the agency. Okay, okay, good. This is like, yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is my new thing, onboarding. Yeah. Onboarding. Um, how, Hashtag onboarding. Exactly. Um, the first thing, obviously, is how does an actor get on your radar? An actor gets on our radar in a number of ways. They hear about us through word of mouth of other actors now, sometimes, and they'll write to us. Or they will find us on some sort of contacts list. I think we're in contacts, spotlight contacts, yeah. stuff like that. They'll do a search on something, and we're at the top for you know, immigrant actors or whatever, so they'll do a search. Um, we'll go to showcases, or they'll be doing showcases, actors, and they'll write to us and send us everybody who's in the showcase. Um, and sometimes we might not be going to the showcase, but a relationship develops and, you know, we see the show reel. Really yep. I, I personally don't like showcases. Really? I, I don't enjoy do them. You not, do you not go to many? I don't go to as many as maybe I should. I, I, should I? I don't know. The show reel, it doesn't matter how good you are in your showcase, in a sense. That's one moment, isn't it? It's one moment. And maybe it's, a, it's about getting an agent at that point. What matters is your show reel. That's what represents you. Okay, so um, an actor will connect with us in some way. It'll be either through the ways I've, I've mentioned. Um, it'll be their spotlight link, usually with um, a letter. Keep your letter brief. Don't write a novel, uh, please. But we'll probably just click on the link anyway, because we want that information fast. So everything that you can put on your spotlight page, put it there. Skills, your singing, your dancing, your car driving license, where you trained, that's where we'll find out most about you. Especially if we have never met you. Um, make sure your headshots and showreel are, are in great nick before you write to an agent. I'll click on it, I'll have a look at I'll scan the, the shots. The next thing I'll do is I'll click on the reel. Up it'll pop. And now I'm judging you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> From the moment. You know, and I'm waiting for you to convince me immediately, as soon as possible, this person's interesting. Oh, this person's. I'm believing this. I often get terrible show reels set on the couch shot by, you know, your brother, um, with no production values. Occasionally I'll be able to see a talent through that, but usually not. If I see the show reel, I think it's great, um, or that you have promise, or that with a little bit of editing it could be even more great, the reel in terms of making an impact, because yeah. uh, I take care of that at our agency, the show reels and stuff. Um, then I'll arrange to have a meeting with you and invite you for coffee uh, nearby. And as I said earlier, I'll only be sending you that invitation for coffee if we're about to offer you representation and if, we, if I think that we can submit you for jobs and that you can get auditions. Or if I need, for example, you know, we don't have Indian women, for example. I'm not proud of it, but we don't have you know, Indian speaking Indian women or British Indian women who have Indian languages, you know, same with Chinese, you know. Um, so very often we need the person that's coming to us. So what you're presenting us might be something that we need at our agency and so we might be able to go a little bit further or put, a little bit, put in a little bit more 
work to get you into shape with the real blah, blah, blah. Because presumably you're not, you don't want someone who's the same as who you already have. Right. You want to have as much as a diversity as yes. possible. Yes, yes. Otherwise they're competing. In a sense, yes, right. they are. Yeah. They are. So you want, a, you want a British person, a British woman of 35, who's white, who's black, who's mixed race, who's Indian, yeah. who's anything else, and maybe you want two people who are like that. Because yeah. you want one to be working, don't you? You want both to be working. But if one is working, you want to be able to submit on that job when it's going out as well again. Yes. In another capacity, but your actor is not available. So it's a bit like a Noah's Ark at International Actors London. You need two of everything. I like that. Yeah. You know, I need two black, white, Asian, mixed race, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, men aged 65, yeah. 55, 45, 35, 25, and we have a kids IL young people, which is just starting out now in Brighton. So 15, five, five months, you know, and they, these are, so it's not, I don't get applications from a 60 year old Indian man every day who's gonna be an actor or who's changing agents. Mm -hmm. When I do, I need to pay attention. Yeah. You know, I get applications from 25-year-olds every day, and I love and respect anyone who chooses to do this. Um, but it's, it's that's, flooded. That's one thing, actually. You know, each year, thousands of students are coming out of drama school, and they're all the same age. Yes. And presumably, that's the point that you're, you're you know, letters that you. How many letters do you get on a weekly basis? Emails. Emails. Not that many, about 20 applications, yeah. 20 new applications. And presumably as soon as it's, it's that time for the drama schools, it, it must go up massively. It does, it does. But it's, that's a very confusing time, actually, mm. because actors have a lot of meetings sometimes. You know, sometimes an actor might have three or four meetings with agents. And so you're just waiting back to hear back from them whether they've chosen you. Uh, as, as an agent, um, and we get rejected too. Really? Oh yeah, uh, in, in lots of ways. Yeah. You know, by casting directors, it's not our client. You know, the, the actor doesn't want to join our agency, even though we had a great meeting. Yeah. They're gonna go with somebody else, which we understand because it's a kind of a minefield out there, the agent-client thing, the agent-actor thing. It's hard to navigate that. If you're 22, you go with what's the best route for you? Yes. Do I go with the fancy glittery guy? <laughs> or do I go with this guy who my instinct tells me is working really hard? Um, the, top, the top agents are not always the best choice because sometimes you can get lost in the crowd. I think so. so I believe so. It's not always what you would think is the, the obvious choice is the best choice. That's right. Or you might get disposed of after a time. Yeah. So if you haven't booked in a year, you might just get disposed of, forgive me for being so kind of callous in the language, but that's kind of how it is. Can, it can be that harsh. Now at our agency, that would never happen. Because when you've joined our agency, you've, you know, we've already been through that. We're not here for you to see, feel insecure about your standing in the industry. That's, you know, there's enough of that. An agent is here to make you feel okay, in my opinion, to make you feel safe. Mm. And support uh, you. And you support should, you yeah. to have your back. Yeah. And not to, not to say, okay, well, if you don't book a job within the first 10 jobs, then I'm going to be looking for somebody else. Because the 11th one could book, and then you might get the next five. Because work breeds work, and work breeds confidence. Um, are there any kind of key things that you consistently see with actors that frustrate you? Yes. Would you like me to share them with you? Yeah. <laughs> be bold, be brutal. <laughs> per these are, these, this is what I feel. You know, agents are not your, secretar your secretary. Um, it, your agent will assume you're available from 10 o'clock until six o'clock, 
Monday to Friday for auditions unless you tell them otherwise. And it's perfectly fine to tell them otherwise and block out Thursday if you know you can't do an audition on Thursday. Block it out with your agent. Um, so the last thing you want is your agent going, hi, I've got you an audition for Game of Thrones on Thursday. And you're like, I can't do on Thursday. Because, uh, well, well, why is it not on my list, Johnny? <laughs> yeah. You know? It's wasting your time. It's wasting my time, but also yeah. now I have to go back to Nina Gold and explain why you can't go to an audition. And she's just going to think I'm a bad agent, which I kind of am, but it's, you know, not my fault. It's your fault, but she's not going to think that. And that's going to stop me getting the next person in, maybe, on the list. She might have enough of me that day. So yes, so availability, availability, availability. Try to limit asking for a time change yeah. for your audition. The best answer to give your agent when he, he or she calls you for an audition is say, thank you, yes, I'll be there. Yeah, no hassle, yeah, fine. Thank you, I'm on it, I'll be there. I will move mountains to get there. You don't need to know about that. But I will get there. I've got a problem, but I'll deal, I'll sort with it, I'll get there. Now, we're not monsters. So if you've got a problem, we want to help. So if you do need a time change, you know, and it's a unique situation, yeah. It does happen. Yeah. yeah. But can you imagine if everyone did that? And we're back and forth to casting. Oh, can I, just, you know, can I do uh, Johnny at three o'clock instead of Lisa? Yeah, and the casting director is now hating us as well. Because actually, to, to schedule in what they schedule for an audition, it's tricky. It's tricky. Getting the timings right. And getting people confirmed. Yeah, and sometimes you're pairing up actors together. Yes. And, you know, if they're late or... Yeah, it, it's... And here's the other thing about auditions. So we've given you your audition, Lisa, all of the information you need. We're now waiting for you to confirm with us yeah. that you're going to attend. I think staying proactive is important, you know. Um, I, I'm one of those agents who thinks casting director workshops are a good thing. Yeah. Keeps it, you fresh. It keeps you fresh. You become a real person to that casting director. Um, you know, cherry pick those people that you want to, to meet. Yeah. And go and impress them at a workshop. Now, workshops can be boring because it's not always our moment. And we have to sit back and watch everybody else's scene as well. And that's a bit of a drag, but you know, suck it up. Deal with it, keep your energy, and do a good scene with a good casting director and, and get out there. Keep making your own work, if that's what you do. Follow your own passions, other than acting, stay active, yeah. stay fit and healthy. Last question, what do you think makes a successful actor? Mm, that's a big one, isn't it? A successful actor. And it's not always what it's not always down <coughs> not to always talent. What you think, it's is not it? no. Is he, is Heath Ledger a successful actor? In my view, yes. I, I thought he was brilliant. Was is the operative thing though, isn't it? And it's funny what you know at drama school, the actors that you perceive as being maybe the best because the teachers prefer them or for whatever reason, you, when you come out of drama school, actually those that go on and are still having a career, you know, two, three, five, ten years later, it's usually very different to what you expected it to be because what is required to make a successful actor is it's not just down to talent, is it? It's so much more. No, it's a whole lifestyle, isn't it? And there are many pitfalls that go along with success. When you're making money and you have now enough money to do anything that you want, are we all able to handle that? If we're, you know, recognized on the street, are we able to handle that? How's that gonna affect our mental health, yeah. you know? So for me, a successful actor is somebody who's committed and passionate about what they do, who continues to pursue it in whatever way they can, who enables and empowers themselves and shows results. I, you know, as I've got older, I've hopefully learned not to define myself by you know, the outside world and to look inside and, you know, can I live with myself? Who am I? You know, what do I want to do? 
Yeah, and then yeah. I, and then you could go much deeper and say what well, success is, how you perceive it. Yeah, and success is being success a. Success to you. Yeah, yeah, it's different for everybody. Yeah. You know, are you kind? Are you a kind person? Um, are you a responsible person? Are you, you know, if if you are famous, and if you are, if you have a lot of power, because with fame comes a lot of power and a lot of money. Well, how are you using that power? You know, are you using that for good, like Spider-Man? <laughs> you know, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, how are you using your power? You know, are you using it to enable those less powerful? Or are you using it to nurture the lesser aspects of yourself, you know, the more self-indulgent, you know, addiction, you know, should we even touch on addiction? It's a big thing in, in this industry, in the world, addiction. The more successful you get sometimes. Robin Williams, I watched a documentary about him about a week ago. It broke my heart, you know. Sad. Massively successful. So what is success? I think success, you know, do we have people around us who we're connected with, who we love, who love us? Have we got food and shelter um, and a reason? Have we got a reason for getting up in the morning and a purpose? And a, do we have opportunities to help others? Are we being bombed? For me, if I've got most of that stuff, I'm successful. Lastly, do you have any kind of last tips for actors? If you're, an, if you're a young actor, audition for everything. If you're not a well-known actor, audition for everything. Unless it's something you object to in a big way, then don't. But in, generally speaking, audition for everything because you will get experience from everything and you will connect with practitioners who are doing different things down the line and maybe you'll re-enter that path again later on and find something and you know, there'll be something amazing. There's a much yeah. bigger picture. There's a bigger picture, much bigger picture. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I hope it was helpful. It was wonderful. Good. Thank you so much.